Hey, hello everyone. Welcome to this channel. Um, we had planned for a weekly um, session for uh, Microsoft Excel training, and uh, many of the subscribers um, they were like very interested. But when we went online, uh, no one came. So I thought, you know, to record this video, and then probably they will be able to watch it whenever they are free, right? So in this video, we'll be going through a um, few of the questions which my subscribers asked individually. And I will cover uh, most of them and almost all of them. And then I will also share the topics which will be shared in the future, um, in the coming days or in the coming weeks. Right. So let's jump to it. Uh, just one more thing to add. If you have any kind of uh, queries or if you have any kind of, um, you know, uh, doubts or if you want any kind of um, advices, please, you can contact me always at any time over the mail or, or my YouTube channel or the Instagram. Um, so these are my social networks. So let's uh, first um, go through my profile or about me, what I do and you know, where from I uh, belong. So basically I born brought up in um, Delhi, India. And then uh, I did my degree in information technology back in India. It was I think in 2010. And I almost now I have um, 13 years of experience in data analysis and now looking forward for uh, to get data scientist. Um, I have experience in Excel, Access, Word, um, Outlook and um, there's VBA, SQL is also there, Python, desktop and web applications. I've developed so many of them. Um, then I have worked on ClickSense and Power BI, machine learning, neural network and reinforcement learning is something I'm um, getting into. And one of the topics which I like is uh, reinforcement learning because of you know being um, connected to the software development. I feel, I feel like reinforcement learning is something which can be really helpful. Uh, my specialization is or the domain is into finance and supply chain. I have been working, I mean, almost like last 11, 12 years, I have worked in uh, both of these and then one year was more into aviation and all. Um, yeah, so there's no questions right now since you guys are not online. Let's go to the next slide. Okay, there are a couple of tips uh, I thought to share with you guys because um, many of the newcomers into Excel, they don't understand what needs to be done when it comes to um, the Excel or learning Excel. The first thing is try to use keyboard as much as possible and avoid mouse. I'm not saying like totally avoid the mouse, but um, it's a voice, but yeah, it's avoid the mouse, but um, try to use as much as keyboard, then your productivity will increase for sure. Then learn shortcuts. Like I said, um, there are a couple of shortcuts which will make your life very easy or it will increase your productivity. Then practice more as usual. Um, the more you practice, the more you will get used to um, the Excel. Now, um, one of the point which I normally used to say, like if you don't understand any of the large formulas, like you know, if you you would have seen very big formulas in Excel. You know, some of the uh, Excel developers or Excel um, pundits or you know, uh, they used to write big large formulas, and then it's it's not easy to understand the formulas. But you can, but basically do. Uh, break those formulas into small, uh, small, small groups or, you know, write those formulas in every column, uh, break it and then you will understand what it does. Okay, um, next is the most commonly used actions or tricks in Excel. So one of one of them is the auto sum. So what does this auto sum does? I'll show you. So this is what we are um, trying to do. Um, we will auto sum the row column or um, rows and then we will also auto sum the Sorry, yeah. So these are the auto sum of columns, and then this is rows, right? So let me just clear this and let me clear this as well. So what we can do, there are a couple of ways. One is simply like you you create sum and then control, control shift up and then break. Oh, enter. Right. So this is how you can do it. And then if you select the same um cell, go to by selecting shift going towards right with the arrow and then control R, it will fill the columns, right? With the with the control R, it will enter all the formulas. Now, if you want to do the same with the columns is equal to sum and then again, control shift and then enter and then control down, control D. So it will fill. Now this is how you can do it, but this is not a shortcut. I will now I will tell, tell you the short key or you know, shortcut. Now let's say and now I am selecting there are two ways. One is I'm selecting all these cells and Alt Enter, right? So this will fill up the same. It goes for this one as well. Alt Enter, Alt equal to solid Yeah, maybe you know, ah, <laughs> uh, Alt equal to a blank. Alt equal to right. So the cell that you select it should be blank. So that's why it was not coming. Now there is another way. Um, go down, clean, 
now select the whole area right and go down and then again alt equal to so it will fill the sum so this is how you done do the um auto sum basically it's alt and equal to now the next is start new row with excel um basically it's again something very important if you are into data entry let's go back to the excel now let's say you are writing my name is right and then you want to enter in the same cell but it should be in the um, let's say the new line right not new row but new line so what you will do uh, alt enter and it will go to the uh, it will create a new line but in the same cell so my name is range so this is how you can do it and right? you must have seen something like this but you may not and you may not have understood why is it uh, like so right my name now let's say i live in now if you enter it will go to the next cell but if you want to write in the same uh, f2 or enter and then buy right so this is how you can um, create a new line within the cell great now what is the next topic next topic is protect other than the selection so what it does it mean um, let's go to this sheet and now what i want to do is to protect these two uh, values or these two columns right um, category and product so what i will do first control a to select the whole worksheet right click format cells and then go to protection if it is checked then it's okay otherwise check it and click on okay that is the first step and then go to these um, columns or select these columns right click again go to format cells and then uncheck this because we are not locking all these columns click okay now this is the two step now third step is basically um, go to the review tab right click on protect sheet now here either you can enter the password or leave it as it is as it is now if you enter the password then only you can unlock this but if you just you know do it without protecting or uh, without entering the password and click on okay now look um, if you see over here now if i try it like let's say control colon it will allow me to change but if i change here like lit it will not allow me to change anything because these two um cell or these two columns have been locked or protected right so this comes very handy when um you are in a team and then you know you don't want any of your co-workers to make any changes in the excel sheet so this can be done very easily right cool now next is switch between excel files um there are two ways one is a control tab and then you can do on the with the help of mouse as well let me show you now let me create a couple of excel sheets control n control n control n right now if you do control tab control tab so you might think that you know it's not changing but it is changing see now have a, have a look over here i'm saying control tab now it moved to book six control tab book five control tab book four control tab book three now the difference between alt tab and the control tab is alt tab will give you um the windows or give you the preview of windows you just try it and then you will get to know uh, alt tab will give you the preview of all the windows open in your system but control tab will only switch between the worksheets um there is another way go to the review sorry um go to view switch windows right here you can select the book as well if you would like to right great now the next topic is copy or move text now this is again a cool um option now let's go to let me just close all these windows like that now suppose you don't want this um sold on on this part but you would like to have it like on the g column right there are two ways one is you simply select this at the bar at the corner of this column and then you know move it ah this is protected let's not uh, let's unprotect this first and protect sheet now if i'm selecting this whole column and then if i want to move i just moved it right but sometimes so what i did i just simply selected the whole column right and then at the corner of this column i just moved it now sometimes you don't want to move it but to create a um, you know similar column or copy this whole column over there you can do that as well um select this whole column and then alt control oh, sorry it's a uh, control alt and then move it will not move it will copy right? so this is how you can uh, copy or move the data of one column or even you can do the similar thing for row as well so this is how you can with control and with the help of mouse you can copy the same column great now let's uh, move to the next topic so these are these are like very commonly used um, things 
or actions or activities in in uh, you know in your day to day uh, professional life now we will go to the next most important topics are like you know the functions or formulas which are done which are used very um, commonly so if you would like to have any questions um, you know answered please you can uh, please feel uh, feel free to feel free to um, contact me on this email id okay now the frequently used formulas or functions so let me tell you the difference between formulas and functions functions are basically there are two types of functions one is uh, predefined functions which are being created or which have been created by the microsoft itself um, and then there is one which can be created by the users like you or me right so functions basically used to ease our life or do the things more easily by not repeating the same action right? so suppose if you are doing something on the daily basis like let's say summing it up you know equal to this column plus this column and this column so instead of that we can use a function to add all those columns together so that's how the functions work now what is formula formula is um it's a collection of functions i would say right so let's say you want to have if condition if condition is again a function and then with that you want to add some columns right so sum is again a function right so you combine the functions together to create a formula right so formula can be um, a one formula which is uh, basically a function or it can be a collection of functions okay great so let's do the um, sum function now um in this we can like in couple of um, topics back we did alt and enter to um, sum the columns this is this is one way and then again alt enter or what we can do we can also do control r so control r basically uh, it's a shortcut to copy the formula from your left side to the current cell right i mean this is very um, most commonly used shortcut which you can use very very easily right now sometimes what happens if you see over here let me hide myself so that easy for you to see okay now let's talk about the sum formula as well or sum function it's equal to sum so what it is saying basically you need to enter the different numbers to sum those numbers let's say if you want to sum this one and then comma again see it's showing number two so i'm selecting number two over here again number three this is a tedious work right because you cannot just uh, keep on selecting cell by cell but what you can do is equal to sum and then just go one cell up and then control up and control shift up and then enter this is one way but the other way which i showed you is simply is equal to, uh, alt and equal to and it will sum all those the columns um upwards and if you see the sum is basically c2 to c11 so c2 to c11 right and um again there's there's something different as well now let's say you don't want to sum this cell right so what you can do over here you can sum you can use two sum functions and then sum up so it's equal to sum i want to sum all these right so this is how it is and then again i want to sum plus sum and then i want to select these ones so this can also be done so if you see over here it's basically um skipping this cell because we haven't mentioned in our sum function what it is saying c9 to c11 and then c2 to c7 okay great now let's go to the next topic now we have vlookup now vlookup is something which has been which has been asked many times and most of my subscribers has asked to go through vlookup so let's do that and after that we will come to trim function as well which is really important okay so what the this vlookup does um it's basically looks for the corresponding value whichever the value we are looking for for the corresponding okay so what vlookup does now let's say um you have the data over here which is a category product price and the quantity and then you have the product now what you want to do or what you want to look for is the quantity from this product with respect to this product so what i'm saying when i when i have product 1 so it should say 54 and um, if it is product 5 it should say 63 right so let's do this first and then maybe we can able to find it in, right so is equal to vlookup now what this formula says or this what this function says what we need to find which is a lookup value what we are looking for is the product 1 comma now what does it say the table array the table array is basically the table or the column which which will have these products or list of products which is this one right now what it says the table array is done the column index number now 
the column which the output or the corresponding value which we are looking for is quantity now if you look over here there is a column 3 3 c which is third column so we are looking for quantity and quantity is on third column if we were looking for price so it will be 2 c which is the price but we are looking for quantity over here and now it's on third column so third column is from the column which we are looking for right so it's equal to uh, comma b comma now what we are looking for is the approximate match or exact match so i'm looking for the exact match the exact match is zero or approximate match is one so i'm saying zero for the exact match. so that's 54 and then if i come over here control d it will fill this up now see if this was like on the normally anyone would say if this is like on the series then why do we need to use the vlookup we can simply just copy this and then paste over this now there are two things one is if the data is very huge like if it is like thousands of records then it is it won't be easy to do that um but the second the, the most important part is now let's show you if it, this is over here see now the formula is not right so here you need to change the formula Control to we look up now let's do this formula from here only only now um this was let's say again i want to do the product nine itself it will fill so whatever you write over here it will look for this uh it will look for this value from this column and then it will find the quantity or the price whichever you want to do so let's do this for price as well right so is equal to v lookup right um and then i'm looking for product one comma i'm looking from this column and I want the price, so price is on the second column as per the selection, comma two, comma zero, and enter. Control down, control up, control D. Right. So this is how you find the VLOOKUP. Do let me know. Are you if you don't understand VLOOKUP properly, let me know. You can contact me anytime on the email ID I provided. Um, so yeah, feel free to contact me. Now there is one catch with with the VLOOKUP. Um, it's not a catch basically. It's an um, the VLOOKUP doesn't work if let's say if i want to find the category with respect to the product one now for an example let's say category right i'm looking for the category now it's equal to we look up as for the normal you know the we look up function i'm looking for for product one comma and i'm looking for category but based on this product one so i'm selecting product but now this category is on the left side of the product so i'm saying okay as for the as per the rule i'm going towards the left side so this is on the second column so i'm selecting comma two comma zero right and it should be exact match now it will give you error why because the vlookup doesn't work the reverse way so whichever the column you are looking for it should always be on the right side of the of the value that you are looking for right i hope you understand right so always if you're looking for um, quantity in the uh, in this uh, whole section um it should be on the right side of the of the column which you are matching it with right okay so when microsoft understood this this problem with the with the vlookup what they did they came up with xlookup now what xlookup does it's almost similar to vlookup but it's more efficient i would say it works both ways okay so let me show you i will do copy right and let's do it over here and now i'm saying copy over here and then uh, so now i want to find the product ah, now i want to know the category so, but before that let's do the normal x lookup which is almost similar to the v lookup but it's more efficient is equal to x lookup what i'm looking for i'm looking for again product one right um where i am i looking i'm looking in this column right now what i want to find is i want to find let's say price right what if it not found it can be possible so let's say not found i will show you what this more not found does right now match mode i'm saying i want the exact match then again there are four options right so play around with them uh, what this exact match does is like same we look up exact match or the next smaller item so it will look for the the if um it will find the exact value but it will look for the next smaller item right or exact match you or the next larger item and then the wild characters match uh, you can you can play around with this right so i'm saying i need the exact match and now this is again very a cool um parameter i would say 
uh, it's like search first to last so it will search these product h in this um in this uh, this product one in this list from top to bottom right but if you say search last to first it will look for bottom to up try to play with this you will get to know what it does so i'm saying i want to search from first to last right and enter right control down control up control d so it has filled it up now the same can be done for the quantity as well is equal to x lookup i'm looking for product one in this column comma i want the quantity right so it gave you the quantity control d now how is it different from x lookup or v lookup is equal to x lookup again i'm looking for let's say product one comma oh, sorry uh, yeah product one will be searched over here right and then i'm saying i need category to be looked right and enter so done right so you don't need to mention the column numbers that we did in the in the vlookup it's really cool stop using vlookup and start using the xlookup great okay so we covered xlookup as well now pivot um pivot is basically used to summarize the data so let's say you have a large amount of data and then you don't know what is the sum of quantity or sum of the the amount you know in the data so you can basically um summarize that data and look for more um information in the data so when we say information it's um there can be a data which is like is a huge pile of data but it doesn't give you any kind of information but when a data gives you an information so that is how it is useful right so that is the difference between the data or raw data and the informational data so informational data give you some informations out of the data and for that pivot is one of the good example um with respect to the function okay let's go back to the sheet and then go to pivot now what i need to do if you see over here um, there is a duplicate data over here right so how to find the duplicate data again you know, condition formatting highlight then duplicate value and then you will see the duplicate data over here but i'm not uh, highlighting this right now you just simply say okay and then you will find the duplicate data but what we are trying to do is to create a pivot now pivot what it will do it will sum up product six quantity price as well as both the quantity and price right so or it will summarize it so let's say i select the whole data and then i'm going to the insert tab pivot pivot from table or range because we have selected the range so we will say range right so now i want to do this pivot on the existing sheet uh now select this one and okay okay uh let me hide myself so that it will be okay now what i want to do i want to sum i want to sum price as well as quantity differently based on the product uh, let's say product will come on rows right now uh i want the price sum price and then i want the quantity as well so quantity now if you see over here when we have product 6 what is sum of product 6 it's 6 um, 751 right so product 6 will give you 751 so it is giving a summarize of the overall data now the same thing we can do, do for the category as well so let's do that select the data insert from range i want to give this on the same sheet so let's say over here and then okay now i want this data based on categories so let's say category and then i want the price sum and then the quantity sum so this time the data is being shown or summarized based on the categories and not on the product level so basically it gives you a summary of overall data and it does really help you out in in many ways okay now let's say for an example you are this needs to be changed to um category four right let's say this is category four and this is also category four but here it's not changing so what you need to do right click and refresh it here it will show the sum so that's how you refresh the data in the pivot okay now the next topic is if condition right so let's go to the if condition uh, if condition is normally um is so what if condition does it normally says that you know if this is the scenario then it should be this output otherwise it should be the other way right so let's say is equal to if right now what it says it says the logical test if that logic is correct then you see it will be the correct value otherwise it will be the false value now what does it mean the, the correct value and the false value i'll show you let's say this column is let's say greater than 500 right then let's say yes you can do 
anything and then let's say no right um this oh yes this is greater than 500 so don't do d now instead of yes let's say validate instead of yes you can do something else as well so instead of yes i'm saying yes greater than 500 and then instead of no i can write it's lesser than 500 and then just copy the a copy but control down control shift down and then control d and it will give you the character uh, this is cool and this if condition right now i have mentioned a very small example but normally when you see a big formulas in excel sheet this is how it is done it's basically a collection of multiple if conditions and then um sometimes some people i don't know it's it's really big you know some people don't understand that you know don't not to use big formulas because if there is any data inconsistency in the formula or in the sheet then it's really tough to go through the whole formula so try not to have a big formulas and again it also compromises the performance of the excel sheet if there is like big formula and there are many columns within the sheet uh, trust me you will not be able to uh, do uh, you will not be able to work on that excel sheet easily okay now the next topic is concatenate i think i have mentioned this in my shorts but i wanted to do a longer video on this so that it's easier for you to understand because one minute doesn't teach you anything right especially the excel functions or the formulas uh, you need to have a better understanding okay let's go to the concatenate now concatenate um is really useful why because um it can also be used in let's say pivot it can also be used in x lookup or v lookup why because with the help of concatenate function or there are like two ways but i will show you you can combine multiple columns to create a unique value and unique values are really important when it comes to um let's say pivot x lookup or v lookup and this is how you can create a unique value i will show you um so the first way is um normal formula let's say formula is equal to um this column ampersand double inverted comma and let's say let's do the space over here again double inverted comma ampersand and product right so category one and product one so this is how you concatenate with the normal formula over here right so what we are doing we are combining two formula two formulas or two columns together with a small space so instead of space what we can also do is let's say i'm saying underscore over here and then d right um and then this is how you can combine two columns together but then there is a function as well let's work on function is called to concat right so there is concatenation concatenate and then there is concat i'm using concat i'm saying category one and then comma category product as well right so this concat is not expecting much from much as a as a what we say um parameter but see the difference over here so what you need to do over here you there is no underscore right so let's do concatenation is equal to concat so let's say this one comma is the same okay so i would say use the formula this is much easier but again you can do whatever you would like to have suppose if you want to add a space in between just say double inverted comma space and double inverted comma and then the comma so it will give you space between the row d okay so now let's check the next topic next is the date difference this is again um very complicated when you are if you are really new to the excel world because it might not give you the correct answer uh, when it comes to the date and there are like many functions in excel which can be really tiring tiring to understand which function to be used but um, i'll just give you a simple example how to find the date difference because this is something um, many people don't understand how to do this but generally it is very straightforward the complication comes in when you change the format of a column and then it gives you a wrong information or the data right so let's say here here if you let's say find want to find the date difference between these two is equal to the bigger date minus yeah so this is like what 17 days or 29 days difference this is easy but sometimes what happens um you know you change this formula over here or the formula format or the date format sorry not formula and then if you say that you know it's a currency and then see and if you go back and again try to find a difference now i'll see the change the uh, see the difference over here now this is currency earlier it was general 
now if you find the try if you try to find the difference between these two it will give you an aed so if this is normally the scenario one thing which you can do right is to right click this column and then format cell go to general and then okay this is the one way or the best way is to delete this whole column try to create the new column because that is the best way to do it because sometimes the cleaning of uh, selecting the number format also might not work so it's always good to you know i use a new column as a uh, to find the date difference okay now what next is a sum if now this is the data that we have now what i'm saying based on okay let's give you an example is equal to sum a sorry is equal to sum if right so what it says it's first asking you for a range so i'm saying this is the range right and then it will it is asking you to give a criteria on that range so let's say some if and then i'm i want the criteria to be done on this and let's say this whole range right is let's say greater than 500 um so i'm saying greater than 500 right then it should sum this one so what it does if this price is greater than this then it should sum otherwise this is the one way now let's say you want to sum the same price column itself so you don't need to pass the last parameter you just say so it will sum you it will give you the sum of all these um columns whichever is greater than 500 so now let's see if which one are greater than 500 i'll select these ones this one this one this one this one right and then let me write myself is giving you th this one so what is the total 4100 110 is the sum and then there is the same sum which is so this is how you do the sum if criteria now sum if is almost similar but what i'm saying is i can pass multiple criteria over here so what i'm saying like let's say is equal to sum ifs right and i'm saying i want to sum this range based on criteria if it is product six okay it should be like this range in this range it should be product six right and then again from this range it should be category six when both these conditions match it will sum so 751 is the sum so let's say category six and product six is this one and this one seven it should be 751 this is 751 so basically some ifs uh checks for multiple criteria within the selected range now count if is almost similar to some if so instead of sum, we are doing the count let's go back and then let's see count if so is equal to count if so i want to count this i want to um, count from all this range and i'm saying for an example like we did in the previous um, sum if so i'm saying this column count if i want to count all this based on if it is let's say greater than 500 greater than 500 right okay so how many are there we have um seven we have seven numbers or we have seven values which are greater than 500 so one two three four five six seven right so this is how you can do the sum if count if now count if is also again similar to sum if so let's say count if and then i'm saying if in the product one range i'm saying it should be equal to product six right and then in the category it should be equal to category six right there are two values which are matching which is this one and this one now let's say instead of category six i'm looking for category five so there is not matching anything because both these criteria should be matching and then i'm saying five so there are there is one record which has both category and product as category five and product five it's almost similar to the if condition some ifs okay the free spin um again this is really good if you are if you used to work with um large data let's say there's a huge data and then you need to go scroll down but the problem is then you will not understand which column was it right so that is where the free spin works uh, i'm selecting this whole um let's say the whole array or row and then i'm going to view and then free spin so there are three options over here one is freeze the first column freeze the top row or free spin so top row normally what does if you have selected anything over here and then select freeze top row it will basically freeze the call um the headers right so it's really easy to um go through the whole data but sometimes if suppose i want to
to freeze from this and below so you can do first unfreeze the pain and then because you yeah unfreeze the pain and then freeze pain now if you see from the data you selected from there it the the screen gets freezed right so and then you can do the same thing with the column as well first unfreeze the pain and then freeze pain now you go towards right it will show you the rest of the columns right so yeah this is how the freeze pain does last but not the least the trim function this is um this is very used very frequently and i i do actually use it very frequently and especially if you're working with um, more data or you know the data which is like very unpredictable so basically what you do when, when you have more like experience you know many years of experience you get to know when you see the data that you know how what the data could be but sometimes what um you might not understand the data properly so there are some predefined functions that needs to be used i will show you how the predefined functions can be used in some such scenarios so let's say let's go back to the trim function now here this is the kind of you know raw data which comes in with the data right and then you want to remove the space but you might not understand if there is a space or not right or there is a extra characters which is not visible with the naked eye so for that what you can do first you check the number of characters in that cell for that what you can do is equal to length and then select this whole cell and then control d now if you see over here normally the number of characters or the length of a cell is 9 but here if you see it's 11 then we have 30 then we have 50 why because there are spaces before this let's say here see there are spaces here and the same goes with product one as well so there are spaces after product one see so for this what you can do you can use a trim function so what it does is equal to trim and then select this so it will remove the spaces from um from the left side of the character or the string and the right side of the string. right so trim and then control d control down and control d so now if you see over here even though it will not remove the spaces within the text it will only remove the space from left side and right side of the text and not within the text now if you see over here and length you will see all these are nine apart from the last string for this there are other ways you can use the replace function you can use the substitute functions will not go into that detail because then uh, you might get confused okay so this is how you can use two um, functions together to understand how you know data can be cleaned with with large data okay again if you have any questions or doubts or if you need any advices please feel to contact me now these are the topics um which will be going through in the coming uh, weeks first is actually getting to know excel now these are the topics that uh, we will be covering in the future sessions um, which we will be having uh, every week on sundays 8 pm on dubai time right so first we will go through what is excel and which all versions are there in excel and how the compatibility between different versions of excel works and uh, the history behind excel how it came into existence now then we will go through the each tab within excel like home edit insert and all um so those are basically called the ribbons so we will go through each 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 sections or group within the within the tabs right and then we will go through multiple ways of entering or editing data then we have formatting and aligning this is really important because this is how you basically um present the data to the to the end user or even it is i mean even to you as well then we will use um formulas how we can use the formula or how we can create a formula with functions and other ways then we use the excel's existing functions so when we say existing functions microsoft has given us many functions within excel which we can use and create um, a great dashboard or you know um, a data uh, or useful or informational data then we have auditing validating and protecting data like we mentioned in the previous sections um how we can validate data or you know protect data from the users not to you know change it and then we have hyperlinks combining um, data and then the status bar status bar is again really um, useful when it comes to you know just to understand if the data within the excel is really uh, correct or you know it's a useful data uh, for an example let's say the sum if the data is not correct within the let's say a value then it will not show you the correct sum 
then um, we will also go through what is um, transferring or the duplicating of data to other um, locations let's say to another excel sheet then we will go through tables which is a really important topic within excel then we have charts again if you want to see um, our data is not only about um, you know getting the information but it's also about to visualization as well so the visualization of data comes with the charts so we will go through the charts and then how we can import data from multiple sources see excel is not the only source of import um, the data right it can be the data can be in sql server or somewhere in an online website as well so we will try to import data from multiple sources then we have pivot tables and pivot charts again um, are really important topics then geography geography and um, stock data data stock data types basically excel 365 has uh, introduce some more uh, data options like you can see the, um, the stock market data or the geography, geography data then um, we have excel macros we will again go through the macros how we can record macros and we can um, ease our life with uh, with uh, by creating macros and you know saving our time and increase the productivity last but not the least we will be going through vba which is uh, basically an extension of macros but VBA is like, you know, it can really make your life easy. It's, it's a programming language which came in very uh, early stages of Excel. And um, we have, um, I have already started this, um, you know, VBA uh, tutorial. If you want, um, you can surely go and, you know, check my, uh, any of the playlist, which names, you know, VBA uh, for beginners, right? Okay, um, that's all. Um, if you have any kind of doubts, you can drop me a mail. You can contact me over YouTube instagram and um, also you can comment in the in this video down below please make sure to like share and subscribe have a great day thank you so much take care